What is going on people of the Smart Society? Matt here from mksmarts.com and in this video we're going to be talking about the MQTT binding version 2.4 for OpenHab. of OpenHab is to go fully web UI based so that way you can do everything from the web browser and the MQTT binding version 2.4 is the first step to that. In this video I'll show you how to remove your old MQTT 1.0 configuration, how to get the full MQTT 2.4 configuration running and we're going to connect an MQTT device to that MQTT 2.4 setup. The MQTT device we will be connecting today is the blinds control device from MK Smart House. And this blinds control device is made on a custom PCB. And I like to get my PCBs from PCBWay. PCBWay is a company that specializes in PCB prototyping, PCB assembly, and SMD stencil. PCBWay is currently celebrating their five year anniversary. So they are giving away over 5,000 plus gifts plus coupons. The link to PCBWay and all their information on their promotion is in the description below. And you, if you use the cash code on the screen, you can get $5 off your order. And I thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into the guide. So we're going to be following the guide that is on mksmarts.com. The link is in the description to the guide. Right now I have it in a Google Doc, but it will be on the website. And I recommend having it open as you go through, so that way you can just copy and paste commands as needed. So at this point, if you have MQTT 1.0 installed, then continue watching. And if you do not have MQTT at all on your OpenApp server, then skip to this timestamp on the screen. So the first thing that we're going to do is SSH into our OpenApp server to remove the broker that's already been there when for the 1.0 binding because we don't have the embedded broker. So just SSH into your OpenApp server. If you're on Mac, use Terminal, and on Windows, use PuTTY. All right, once you are SSH, we're going to first make sure that our Raspberry Pi is up to date. So just do SSH, apt get update, and upgrade. Type in your admin password. All right, mine looks like it is up to date. Um, now we're going to remove the Mosquito broker. So just type in sudo apt get dash apt get remove mosquito and it's going to say and you want to type in y and press enter because you do want to continue all right the mosquito broker is removed so we are done with we are done with terminal for now or ssh now we're going to go into our web administration portal for openhab so you want to go to the ip address of your open app server colon 8080 bring you to the start page now go to paper UI now we're gonna go into add-ons then we're gonna go into bindings and we're gonna search MQTT and simply press uninstall next to the 1.0 sometimes if you press refresh and type in the binding again it'll show you that it has been indeed removed all right, now to install the new MQTT binding, you want to first go into add-ons, then you want to go into bindings and type in MQTT, and press install next to the 2.4 MQTT binding. And then you also want to go into miscellaneous MISC, type in MQTT here, and then you want to press install next to the embedded MQTT broker. Alright, now if we press refresh and then search for it again, MQTT, it is ready and it says it's installed. Now let's make sure the MQTT one installed, the MQTT binding installed. Boom, there it is. Both those things are installed. Those are the only things we need to install. All right, so next we are in inbox. You want to press search for things, MQTT binding. And then if you have, if you want to use the embedded broker, then press the check marks next to the uh, 
MQTT broker, but if you have an external MQTT broker, then you want to press add manually, MQTT broker, and then here you would type in the IP address of your external MQTT uh, server. And then there are also more things that you configure if you press show more. And if you have a custom MQTT server, you would know. But we're going to be using the built-in MQTT embedded broker. So we're just going to go back to inbox and press the check mark next to MQTT broker. And just leave it as is and press add as thing. So now let's go ahead and look a little bit deeper into the MQTT broker. So we're going to go into configuration, services, and MQTT embedded broker and click configure. So these are all the different things that you can possibly configure for the embedded broker. If you want, you can choose a different port. Uh, the default one is 1883, which is what I like to keep at. And you can also choose if you want a secure connection, but most devices don't really use that, so I wouldn't change that. And then here you can choose a username and a password. So if you want to make uh, all of your connections to the MQTT broker um, password protected and username and uh, secured, then you can provide a username and password that devices that connect to this MQTT broker need to provide. But me personally, I don't need the connections because it's all my local Wi-Fi anyway. And if we press expert mode, you can just see it differently. But I like to keep it at default and not modify any of these settings, so I just press save. So the MQTT server is now fully configured and ready on our OpenHab servers. So let's go ahead and test it out and make sure it all works. I like to use a program called MQTT.fx. I'll leave a link to it on the guide on my website. So we're going to create a new connection to our OpenHab server. So press the gear in the top and then we're going to press the plus button in the bottom left. We're going to call this OpenHab Embedded Broker. And then the address, this is the same address for your OpenHab server, so mine is 192.168.0.0. 120. Uh, the port, if you changed it, then change it here. And then user credentials, I didn't do any. And you can leave everything else. And then just press apply. And then press cancel. And now press connect. Boom. And if you see the little green circle right here, that means your embedded broker on your OpenApp server is ready and good to go and can accept connections. Let's go ahead and send a couple messages back and forth. So in the subscribe, type in the pound symbol or hashtag, depending on what generation you're from, and press subscribe. Now in the publish, you can type in whatever topic you want. I'm just going to write uh, hi. And I'm going to say hello world and press publish. Now if we go to the subscribe topic, we should see it, and there we do. So there we go. We successfully received a message and sent a message uh, using MQTT. Now that we confirmed MQTT works on our OpenApp server, let's connect an MQTT device to it. The device we'll be connecting is the blinds control device from mksmiles.com. Link is in the description. With this device, we'll be able to control blinds. Now on mksmiles.com shop, we also have a variety of different MQTT devices that you can connect to OpenApp. The way this all works is for each MQTT device you create a thing for. And for each thing, there are channels, which are different inputs and outputs of MQTT device. Then each channel has an item so you can control or read the channel. So if that didn't make sense to you, let me show you how that works with this blinds control device. And in the future, I'll make uh, remake all the mksmarts.com slash shop devices, uh, different tutorial videos for them. But the concept is the same. So we're going to go back to our OpenHab uh, web configuration portal and we're going to go to inbox then we're going to press search for things MQTT binding and then we're going to press add manually and now we're going to press generic MQTT thing and then you want to give the device a name so I'm going to call this MK lines control 1 and you don't need to fill out the thing ID or location 
Then you want to select a bridge. You want to select your embedded MQTT broker. And then press the check mark. So we just created a thing. So this blinds control device is a thing. Now we need to create and link the channels to items. So we're going to go into configuration, then things, and then we want to edit the MK blinds control one thing. So press the little pencil. Okay, so now we're going to create the channels for the MK blinds control device. We're going to be creating two channels. One is going to be the number type because it's going to be a dimmer. And then we're also going to be creating one, the roller shutter type, because it's going to be a roller shutter. So let's get to it. So we're going to press the plus button next to channel. So first we're going to do the number value, and then we're going to give it a channel ID. So I'm going to call it MK blinds control one. Uh, and then we're going to do underscore dimmer. And then we're going to label it MK blinds dimmer. So the channel ID is just an internal thing so you can keep track of the channels and label is uh, the label that's attached to it and what you can see. So now we're going to do the MQTT state topic and command topic. So the state topic is what you receive from the device and the command topic is what you send to the device. I should mention I've already set up the device meaning that I went through the configuration using my phone and Wi-Fi, so I connected my phone to its Wi-Fi network and connected it to my main home Wi-Fi network. And I also pointed its, uh, set its MQTT server IP address to this server that we're configuring now. I created the command topic and state topic. So basically I did what's in my MK blinds control version two for more video. So if you wanna know how to do that, watch that video. But let's go ahead and hop over to its uh, host name. So I created the host name of test.local. This is what I set its host name to. We're going to go HTTP colon slash slash test.local. Uh, it'll normally ask you for username and password, but I already authenticated it before. So here we go. We have the command topic. So we're going to copy this, put it here, and we're going to grab the state topic and put it here. And then we're also going to set the absolute minimum to zero and maximum to 100. And that's it. So now we're just going to press save. So the absolute minimum is the value range that can be sent to the device. And we're going to press save. And now that we have a channel, let's link an item to this channel so that we, way we can control it. Let's so press the little circle right here. Item to link. We're going to create a new item. So I'm going to change the name to underscore dimmer. So this is the name of the item we're creating. This is the label, so this is what's gonna show up in the UIs. And then we're gonna create the uh, category. We're gonna write dimmer. And it's the type number and the dimension and the rest we don't need to worry about. Now press link and it is created. All right, so now we're gonna create another channel. So this is going to be the roller shutter type, but actually let me show you guys all the different channel types that you can have. So you can have a text value, so this will be a, like a string value, uh, a number value, a percentage value. You can have an on off switch, so that's on or off. You have an open close color value and a color value HSB, date and time, image, location, and roller shutter, which is what we're gonna be doing. And we're going to give it a channel ID, give it a label, then grab the state topic from here again, from our device configuration portal, and press save. And now again, we're going to be linking this channel to an item so we can control it. So we're going to create a new item, bam, name it like that. So we're going to give it this name. What I like to do is have the name of the thing and then the name of the channel slash item because the channel and item are basically the same thing. So we're going to give it this label and category. We're going to give it roller shutter. And the rest we don't need to worry about and press link. So it's giving me this offline communication error. I'm guessing it's because it's the first time the broker has been set up. So I'm just going to give, go back to my SSH window and give OpenHab a quick reboot. And those of you that don't know, to restart OpenHab, you just sudo system ctl restart openapp 2service and press enter and it'll restart openapp. All right, I guess that solved it. So 
If you get that error, just simply restart OpenHab. I'm gonna put that command for you guys in the docs, that way on the guide, if you guys run into that error too, you just restart OpenHab. But anyway, now if we go into control, and there we go, we can see the controls for this device. So we're gonna press the down button, there we go, it moved. Press the up button, it also moved. And we can also set the number to whatever we want. So we can write 50 if we wanted to. Press the little check mark. And it moves to 50. But how do we add these uh, items into our sitemap file? So we're going to go ahead and open up our SSH window. Go to sudo nano slash etc slash openhab2 slash sitemaps slash home dot sitemap enter and it loads up our sitemap so I have created these two items right here one of them is for the roller shutter and one of them is for the dimmer so I'm going to go back into the SSH window I'm going to just go ahead and plop it into the demo frame and there we go so this is the I just took the, these two items names from if you go to configuration and items as you can see I just matched up the na names so I took the dimmer is right here, and the roller shutter is right here. And then I also added some mappings to the roller shutter. All right, now press Control X, Y, and Enter. So now if I go into my basic UI, I have my items, so I can press it. And as you can see, it moved over there. And I have the two items here. All right, that is it for this complete guide to OpenHab MQTT 2.4. Uh, this guide is probably going to be the same for if OpenApp changes it to 2.5 or anything else with a 2 in front of it. So if you have any questions or need help, join my Discord server. I believe it's mksmarts.com slash Discord, um, or it'll be the link in the description. Uh, in the description, you'll find links to all the parts and devices used in the video, as well as a link to mksmarts.com slash shop, where I have a wide range of smart home kits that you can put together, such as this one. Alright, if you found this video helpful, click that like button, and if you are a smart enthusiast, you belong on this channel, so hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below, or join the community over at mksmarts.com slash forum. Goodbye. Hey, no, no, no.